Hey, Nixa. So I, I have to start where we started. Um, what, what do you feel that is, uh, what do you feel is a necessity for us to know about Putin that we lack as a community? Because I can't speak for the whole of the West, but you did speak specifically for being in this chat and listening to me. So what, what, what crucial information do you think we're lacking in regards to good old Vladdy? Um, well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to join. Um, this is my very first time being on Twitch, so this is really cool. I want to ask you like a quick question so that I can understand better um, your background, if that's okay. Are you based in the U.S. or yeah. Yeah. U.K.? Okay, so you're based in the U.S. I I will speak out of my assumption because for now, this has been 30 minutes of me being on Twitch. Say what I assume is to be the truth based on what I've heard and, and, and you know, you told me or you told us and I'm open to discussion. But essentially, when I... How did we start this conversation even to begin with? We talked about Navalny's um, documentary and you made a comment, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, you made a comment along the lines of what he did, his documentary is not as nuanced or is not as deep as some of the other people that you've mentioned, like that went against the- No, I said it didn't require as much work. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, it didn't require as much work as, say, other people that went against the establishment or the Catholic Church, correct? Yeah. Okay, so before I, again, share my thoughts, why do you say it does not require as much work? Because to actually take the Catholic Church to account for what they did took an entire team of people almost 20 years um, to uh, take the uh, military industrial complex of the United States to task took, say, on the order of magnitude, a couple hundred thousand lives and actual um, insiders within the military industrial complex um, and many people who risked their careers over many years to do so. I understand that the context is similar. But I also believe that the scale is more terrifying. That one mm -hmm. of these, especially in the institution of uh, within the context of the Catholic Church, is an institution that spans two thousand years and has globe-spanning power. I understand that, and I think Putin, just to summarize, Putin's an upstart player compared to the Catholic Church, and compared to the United States military-industrial complex, Russia is kind of funny. For me to understand, so in, 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 in summary, when you compare, I don't even understand what we're comparing right now, but I'll just make an assumption. When we compare the effort that takes to take down these institutions versus take down Putin. My point, looking, my point first, was that you made a statement that you had never witnessed any, that this was the high watermark of investigative reporting and that it blew your mind and that you had never witnessed anything anywhere ever in the history of the world that, uh, that even lived up to this standard. And we have actual investigative journalists in community right now that was like, yeah, no, I have other names as well. You should probably look into, right? Like, mm -hmm. The, your your standard was the point. Your standard was cool. Maybe that's what your high water mark is now. But there's other things that you should probably look into because other people have put in even more staggering amounts of work. Okay, I understand. I understand that. So, okay, the state the standard um, when we talk about comparing, say, U.S. or uh, Russia, we. If I understand correctly, we, we we look at the magnitude, like the large, the size of the institute. We look at the lives lost. We look at the years, etc. One thing that I've been living in the U.S. for more than ten years now, and I fled Russia, not because of my own choice. I had to. When I look at the U.S. and I've lived in multiple states and I've had extensive experience with the local grassroots organizations, with the politicians, I met AOC back when I was super liberal. So I've had experience being in different parts of the world, so to speak. 
One thing that is clearly abundant to me is the number of documentation and re uh, written records available to the American citizens to start the investigative work. Unlike the America, when you come when it comes to Russia, so many people didn't even know the the date of their birth. If we take the deportation of Chechens in 1944, even Johar Dodaev, the father of the first Chechen war, he doesn't even know his birthday. I mean, now he's he was killed. Uh, I, I, the, the case I'm making here is that so much of what is available to the United States and the West as far as investigative work is written. When it comes to Russia, it is all hush-hush. So that is the point I was making as far as how complex and intricate it is. There's so much that is, mm, so much effort put into this work that is beyond my mind. Like, how can you look for something that cannot be found? That's that's the I guess the you ever tried to get an answer out of the Catholic Church? You know their 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 records aren't even subject to our laws half the time, and they absolutely shuffle people off elsewhere into the world. They have their own I'm, nation I'm, state. Hmm. Oh, sorry, I interrupt. Well, I'm just saying they have their own they have their own city state even. And their uh, confessions with the uh, with the clergy are literally protected, legally. Can't touch them. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, this is again. I don't give a shit, frankly. Like the thing that you're arguing, like I legitimately don't care about. I'm saying there's other investigative journalists out there that have done amazing work that, like, frankly, you should probably look into because clearly you haven't. Like. That like we're we're firmly aware of the Navalny documentary. We've watched it. Like we're aware of Putin's history. We have better documentation about Putin over here, frankly. Like this is like I don't, I don't care. Like I don't okay. care if if the Putin documentary about his house is the most is your high water mark for investigative journalism. Right. And that's that you don't want to look any further and you never want to look into investigative journalism again. That's your prerogative. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot I, was, I'm a lot was, good. Sorry. Um, no, no, continue. I'm more interested in what what about Putin that chat doesn't know that we need we desperately this this community needs educated on because we clearly know nothing about putin well i think to begin with i i even if i you know show you some magic tricks and i and i and i'm able to fly if you're if you're coming into these conversations saying i don't care and not in the spirit of ignorance. I don't care about right. your subjective v verdict of what uh, what warrants the best invest why, piece of investigative why, why, journalism why, ever. Why, no, I don't care about your subjective why, evaluation. Now, please, if you have some... Don't lie to me. Why is it subjective? Because if you... Do you have an objective ruler by which we could measure the best piece of investigative journalism? Do you have something we can quantify and qualify that with? If we are thinking, if we're looking at the investigative journalism in the U.S. and in Russia, one of the most objective tools is knowing the language. If you, if you, if you want to get granular, having access to the materials, knowing the language is the number one objective rule. If you don't, and I, I'll make an assumption, you don't speak Russian, correct? Oh, of course not. <laughs> okay, so... I will ag admit that there is a lot, like you mentioned the Watergate, that it is a lot that I don't know. I am not saying that it is the only one. If you look at the comments specifically, it says I was mind my mind was blown by the level of effort or the intricacy of that documentary that Navalny uh, released, right? I am not saying that it's the only documentary. When you think about, again, going back to my point about the language, when you think about the language, how you, as someone who is from the U.S., can so confidently say that there is not enough for us to know about Putin. And this is where we can actually go into the second point. What do you not know about Putin? The number one thing, I think, is <laughs> the impact that he had on the actual people's lives. Forget about the statistics, because Stalin used to say the death of one person is, is a tragedy, the, the, the more than one is statistics. Forget about that. The 
average Chechen people or the average Russian babushka, that type of that information, that the impact that Putin had had on them is what Americans and the Western world, in my opinion, is it does not know or not aware of. Uh, spaghetti almost, it seems like that, but we'll let her continue. Okay. I think this is something I've noticed in the past as well. When we, when I talk to, to people that speak English and English is a privilege, no English is a privilege. It's almost like if, if you speak English, your stories, your pain, you know, the struggles that you went through matter. And me just saying this, that what you don't know about Putin is the actual effects on people's lives is spaghetti. I'm questioning your, you know. Spaghetti really, is a chatter in my chat. I no, I understand. I understand. If I say that somebody died in America and the impact that Biden had on that or Trump had on that, why would that figure of speech or that sentence consider it irrational or spaghetti-like or useless. I don't know exactly Again, what the meaning you put. Again, you're in. apparently mistaking me addressing somebody with the username of spaghetti in my chat for a comment of saying something is spaghetti-like. I, I, I did not see that. I literally I explained that and then you yelled at me. I apologize. Um, and you have just told somebody in chat, by the way, that a black man speaking English is a privilege. Remember, it was raped and beaten in, in, into him. Knowing English is a privilege, 100%. Hey, Marcus, People congratulations on your privilege. I'm sure your ancestors are proud. I, when, when I went to a privilege class back in New York, anybody knows that there is circles of privileges. I'm not saying that... Um, that, uh, you know, when you are a certain ethnicity or race, that you have more privileges than other. I'm saying language is a category of privilege. It's not even me saying, it's liberal teachers saying. Mm, it's a shame I'm not a liberal. Okay. Fine by me. If you want to discuss intersectionality with an anarchist one would have to get up pretty early. It's only a privilege in the English-speaking world. If you want to say speaking English is a privilege in Tianjin, where now it puts you at a distinct disadvantage, you would be uniquely incorrect. So blanket statements such as speaking English is a privilege, especially when you're making blanket, state uh, blanket statements about people who were colonized, becomes lacking, uh, uh, lacks nuance. And you are claiming that the Americans you speak to and about lack this, uh, the same nuance that I'm witnessing in you as well. What is a language? A communication, really it's a communication medium through which information and data is transmitted through audible or verbal methodologies. Does everybody have that? No. Have the ability to speak? Okay, so when I, when I think about speaking the language, particularly speaking English from the global standpoint, someone who speaks English someone who doesn't speak English objectively has different trajectories in their life. If you are from Russia or Ukraine, for instance, and you speak English, you have the more opportunities to either get somewhere in life as, as a teacher or as an interpreter so or even leave your country. The English privilege carries in Russia or Ukraine. Speaking English in America is not privilege. It's mm -hmm. a baseline default socioeconomic status that then conveys disadvantages if you don't, but it is the normative value for society. In America, speaking English and Spanish and Russian and Chinese or Mandarin, or these convey privilege. So speaking Russian in America is privileged. 
I'm sorry, say it again. Speaking Russian in America Mm -hmm. is privileged. Speaking English in America is a default socioeconomic normative value. Okay, so I, I this is a nice, uh, neat definition. But let's 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 get granular. When you are say um, at a gas station, anywhere where you have to deal with people, or you are talking with a customer rep that doesn't necessarily speak your language. I have witnessed, and I'm sure some people as well, that when you are coming in as somebody who is, for instance, of you know, Hispanic descent, and you're not able to properly express your concerns to something, you get disregarded rather quickly. However, if you come in, and especially if you're coming with a British accent, get it. For some reason, you get a different kind of treatment. I've worked in many jobs. I worked as a nanny. I worked in the rest- in re- restaurant business. You know, I, I've, I've seen on the kind of human level what English, knowing English, properly speaking, does to you. I think I, think I agree with you as far as like the official, you know, definition of the language. I, I also have to say that there is a practicality in it. You know, there's a theory and there's application. In theory... You wouldn't even listen to me if I if I couldn't express myself. I mean, my English, granted, is not perfect, but I'm able to speak to you. If I wasn't able to speak to you, you wouldn't even give me a time or a minute to talk to me. Why? Because I would be cohe- in, incoherent. You wouldn't even understand what I'm saying, and frankly, would get annoyed. Why she didn't? Why did she get on this chat? Why why is she even talking to me? That is a natural human reaction, unfortunately, and that's why I believe that knowing English is a privilege. Great. So what effect did Putin have on the babushka on the street? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a tough subject um, to talk about because I've, I, I grew up in Russia and I was, when I would go to school, we had this lady and, and I'm going to talk about the human stories because we, like the Wikipedia type level information everybody has access to, but the kind of information that only people who lived in Russia have very few ready to share. I, I'll be honest with you. I know so many people from the Caucasus that have experienced horrific events. I've translated their stories to submit to lawyers. and They can't talk about what happened to them, the level of torture. So the babushkas, for instance, right? And they're not the only people in, in Russia that suffered, but the babushkas that I've experienced as a child who went to their houses, lived in the same building, when would wait for my mom to come and you know wait at their house until my mom comes from work. They couldn't afford to buy meat. Till today, I know from my experience, at least 10 ladies that grew up with me and, and now they are in their 90s. Right? They're, you know, they're very, very old rationed food as if it's still USSR and Russia claims that it's a democratic country on the on the you know world stage when when in fact in reality it is still a socialist a communist country that changed a little bit its utter appearance but still has the same tactics another thing that I think a lot of people don't know if, if we if, if it's okay if I, I'll go further is the concept of uh, prapiska you know, people in Russia are not able to travel easily from state from, from from city to city without having a prepiska. Prepiska is the certain document that you absolutely have to have, where it assigns you to an apartment in that certain city. And if you don't have that prepiska and you're stopped on the say the street, the police will send you back to the, the city that you came from. So this created this segregation, especially between the Caucasus and the central you know, uh, central parts of, of Russia, because everybody wants to go to Moscow, everybody wants to go to St. Petersburg, and unable to do so because, A, you don't have that document, and B, till today, there are ads online and on the buildings that says, apartment available for rent, Russians only, apartment available for rent, Slavic people only. And surprisingly, you know, if you saw me, I look white, I look very white. But to them, 
as a non-Russian person, I am not white. I am non-Russian, which is a derogatory term, and darky, which is another term that they use. And people like me who are living in the Caucasus, we can really like have the same opportunities or privileges that the rest of the of the population can. I can go on and on, but I don't want this to be a monologue. I and think you. I, about this. I can't speak for the rest of the West and anybody who characterizes things as the West. I generally disregard anyway. Just I'll tell you that right out of the gate. But you haven't said anything unique yet that this channel wouldn't have already been aware of, that this community wouldn't have been aware of, that there's a rural-urban divide within the, your nation state, that ethnic minorities can, were and continue to be oppressed by the regime. Even, even the inscription, the propiska, even the inscription that was used during the Soviet Union era uh, isn't new to us. Like, this isn't, like, we're aware. And, like, we're aware that this exists elsewhere, too. That this isn't unique to this particular region, even. We're aware of the Russian history of utilizing ethnic minorities as bodies for conflicts, for a dual purpose to, one, wage war in some effort and to whittle down those ethnic minorities. We're aware of the use of starvation tactics within Russia. It's long storied history of them doing that. We're aware of them utilizing and weaponizing addictions and indus industries of those addictions against those people. Like, I don't want to seem blasé about it, but the reason I do is because your accusation is so aggressive that the only reaction that I can have is one of, yeah, we know. Like, we know how fucked it is. I think you think you found your way onto, like, some Demsock stream or some sort of, like, you want to talk about the history of Russians and my people? I'm an anarchist. Russians have been hunting my ideological brothers and sisters every chance they've ever gotten. Right? The, Lenin opened fucking machine gunned us in the streets. They artillery shelled the anarchist club of Moscow. They rounded up anybody who wanted to control their own labor outside the forests of Kronstadt and shot them in mass. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah, we're aware of how fucked up your uh, fucked up your home country is, or if you define it as your country, or whether you identify with it. That's fine. Neither here nor there. We're aware of how fucked up Russia is. We know people starve. We know people get beaten. We know people get racially and ethnically discriminated against. We know Putin helms an oligarchical regime that is the height of corruption. Right? Like, yeah, we know. And our English privilege didn't prevent us from knowing that. Can you name at least one person impacted by the deportation of Chechens? I don't know any. But I know it okay. happened. And I know people it's suffered not, because it's not of the same. it. It's not the same. It doesn't. It's not the same. How, I, what do you want yeah. from me then? What the fuck do you want from me? Do you want me to move? Do you want to trade places? Do you want me to, do you want to send me to your hometown? Because that's the only way I fucking get to know that. What is this ridiculous line of inquiry? I'm aware of the suffering. What do you want me to, well, you can't possibly know the suffering in that way. If you haven't engaged in it yourself, then you can't possibly. Well, you want to walk, you want to walk in my footsteps? You want to walk in my footsteps? How's your fucking health? How's your fucking disability? You want to grow up in the deep south as a gay man? How about that? You want to come of age in Ronald Reagan's AIDS crisis? You want to walk in my my feet too? Like fucking, you don't know what I, I live. I don't know what you live. And stop being a fucking cunt about it. 
Like, I know that your people fucking suffered. I know I won't know them personally because I don't know them personally, but you don't know the people that I knew who died of AIDS either, so you can't possibly know what that's like. So, nah, 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 nah. what is this line of inquiry? You know what? You know what? It's super ironic. because Everything you said, I can name and name for you. For example, the IP, IP, opioid crisis. I read the book of American Fix. When you talked about- You read the book. The you read the and book. I, you I, didn't live I, it. I'm, I'm, I'm about to make a point. Wait, wait a second. I listened to you. Just I sat here and listened to you for fucking 10 minutes straight. How many fucking gay men did you watch die from the AIDS crisis in America? How many? Give me a fucking number. I can't tell if you're you're done or if you're continuing. Number now. How many gay men did you watch die personally from the AIDS crisis in America? Like, you know, it's funny right now. I, I, I love it. You're coming from a place of none, again, American none, ignorance. none. Because, because you literally you knew when... none. Your exact fucking argument against what I'm saying here is what I'm saying about you, yours. You, you can't you possibly know, know how I've you. suffered. So you can, I can't okay, possibly okay. Well, know I'm how glad, you I'm suffered. Glad you're having a good, uh, you know. Jesus fucking Christ. I know you think you're special and that no one has ever engaged in any level of suffering. Just just how Johardo Dive said, I'm a million one, which means there is a million people like me behind me. I'm just a million one. I am in no way special. But one thing I do want to mention, I look, I I am not American. Everything you said to me, I have not just historical context because i understand what you're talking about but i've read and i've had access to the books you didn't fucking so you didn't so okay congratulations i didn't read the fucking book you don't know you don't my response to i know about your suffering was my response to your fucking tale of suffering the response the response you gave me to when i said i knew about that level of suffering was how many fucking can you name well guess what my response to you having read the book is how many gay how men many, can, can you can name? name a single name can you name a single name there is a reason why in blm protests they say say your name and, I, and i'm and i'm not even a, li- a, a liberal i'm in the middle but there is a reason why they say say, oh, you, God, say a, her name uh, she sees because a liberal as names personal stories do you think liberals makes... are leftists I, I have a feeling you're going to educate me right now. Please go ahead. Oh, no, there's no educating you. We're beyond that point. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you think liberals are on the left? Make your point. My point is, when I confronted you with the exact same information that you confronted me with, your response to me was a rebuff, a rebuffing of my experience in the form of, well, you don't possibly know any of these people that I've spoken about, but I read a book about your shit, so we're good. Oh, okay. Uh, if, if, hold on. You are asking me, uh, name a person who died, gay person who died from opioid crisis, is that correct? H i v okay i think it's a different you don't even fucking know what i'm talking about even that's how uneducated on this topic you are an entire genocide an entire genocide of the lgbt community happened on my continent and you don't even know about it you know what again i think you are not doing so well right now i think you 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 definitely Acting like a girl because I came in. Acting like a girl. Right? Oh, I came shit. with open mind. Like Jordan Peterson says. I Like Jordan in, in Peterson of, says. I asked you questions. I, in spirit of ignorance, I asked you questions and I tried to have a conversation. But all I hear is gaslighting, attacking me. What is gaslighting? I, I don't want to have a conversation. What is gaslighting? Is gaslighting. What is gaslighting? Hmm? What is gaslighting? you doing right now cool thanks for the definition bro bro okay hey you're the one who called me a girl bro acting like a girl i never called why is why is acting like a girl a pejorative okay so now we're going into different directions 
can we focus on the point that we're making today, the reason why I came even on this Twitch? What people don't know about Putin. And I just want to respectfully finish this because I again I really frankly you don't know. I'm me. sorry, I, I don't I, I don't think I want to listen. I'm not sure I want to listen to a girl. I mean, you're kind of acting like a girl. Okay, well, because I am. Well, that's kind of an insult from what I understand. The insult would be not to finish this conversation in a civil way. Don't you agree? Oh, no, I disagree with you wholeheartedly. I don't even think you understand what socialism or communism are functionally. What's your political, uh, po uh, like your political science education? And not just, I read a book, bro. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me what, um, you said you're anarchists, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anarchist. Okay, wonderful. Um, um much of what your you know your, your political views impact what you say to me today probably 99 percent of the time right whatever you believe in will impact what you say to me okay right okay so i come and this is again from 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 the communistic russian-speaking world into the u.s where again i was integrated for the last 10 years I do not, when How we have nuanced conversations, when we have nuanced conversations like you? this, cannot say that I am or communist. How or old are you? Affiliation of that. How it's old like are you? saying I can only commit to white or black outfits you? in my wardrobe for the rest of my life. How old are you? I'm not going to answer that. It's irrelevant to this conversation. Oh, no, it's very relevant. Rational conversation. No, it's very relevant because your lived experience informs who you are. Okay, so you want to Give me throw your... ageism at me? Is that what we're doing? Oh, you're you're too young to have experienced the actual USSR, huh? You're post collapse. Okay, got it. Now, gonna, now can you we know. to me your line of thinking. Now, now, we, to, now we're starting to... to actually figure it out, kids. All right. Uh, I've seen her. Oh, Ray, you've seen her. Oh, oh, Viscous, you've seen her YouTube. All right. Um, yeah, this is this is what this is. Okay, cool. So explain to me how Russia is still a communist state. What do you know about communism? Uh, quite a bit, given that I'm an anarchist and we've been fighting them for 150 plus years. But I can tell you the theory versus the practice, which which side do you want to start on? And well, who's, I, I whose particular version a, of it? Are we going to do Marxian? Are we going to do Leninist? Are we going to do Stalinist? Are we going to do Maoist? Are we going to switch it up and do some like weird Slavic versions that, are, that ended up uh, getting spun up? Like whose, whose theory yeah, do you want to start with? Media. That's wonderful. Uh, we can no, have no, a sweetheart, theory I and the practice conversation. Okay, so do we want to do it? Oh, cool. So whose theory do you want to start with or whose practice do you want to start with? I mean, you pick. Cool. Let's start with Marx then. Right? Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I know, right, Kat? Um, so, all right, cool. Criticism cap of capitalism, valid or invalid? Let's start at Das Kapital and work our way forward. Criticisms of That's capitalism, valid or invalid? Okay. You're asking me a question, mm -hmm. right? All right, I thought you were going to share some theory. No, we're going to try and explore it together. We're going to engage in a dialectical exercise. Look, there is a, a structure that has to be what are Marx's? What are some of Marx's primary critiques of capitalism? Didn't we agree that you're going to give me the theory and I will talk practice? No, no, we didn't agree that at all. Who's gaslighting now? No. Oh. Respectfully, a moment ago, we said, you have the theory, you have the... No, I didn't say that. You, know, you, you understand it, right? You mentioned to me the different... Yeah, chat's even verifying that never communism. came up. Leninism, the Marxism. You mentioned, you mentioned different um, mm -hmm. applications of communism as far as theory. I said we can talk about both theory and practice. I said, so where, where do you want to start, right. theory or practice? Well, I would like I would like to hear the theory from you so I can share the practice. 
no, that's not how this is going to work because it's I different. don't think it's I don't different. think you I know mean, any I, of this. Again, you don't know the Russian language. You haven't lived in Russia for you to say, okay, whatever your Wikipedia level knowledge, whatever yeah. Wikipedia level knowledge you have, definitely. is accurate. Because you would definitely agree that theory and practice is very different. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that you don't know anything about the theory and that you have limited ex uh, actual anecdotal knowledge of the practice as well. And I think that you think, I think, um, good things about the practice when, in fact, I have very negative views of it. Why is Russian relevant? Okay, same for any other language. Until I started learning no idea who Malcolm X is. That's why. Anybody catch there that? Things, there are certain things that only with the privilege of knowing the language you have access to. For instance, in the books, in Russian books, there is almost no mention of the uh, slavery that happened in America or the key figures. And in practicality, when you're able to mm, fluently speak the language and, ex and, and have the access to the materials that you guys have, until then, you wouldn't even know who these people are. It would make no sense to you. You can read all the theory you want, but unless you know these people, well, how do you understand the impact they had on, on, on the world? To the tune of Nears makes no difference, 100 million lives. Okay, I mean, you, you, you have the right to your opinion because you're living in the West. Speech, you're privileged that way, unlike everybody else in the third world countries that for saying what you're saying and for saying what I'm saying, you will be jailed and killed. And I think this is the fundamental difference between yeah, you and I that. having this conversation. You this, you having this conversation at the in the comfort of your home mm -hmm. gives you the guarantee of freedom and safety. Me speaking about this. And this is why I have the VPN. Speaking about this brings a huge target on my back. And there is a difference, huge difference. And so with this, I will just end because I want a worthy opponent. If we're speaking about this logically as adults, as logical people, I want a worthy opponent. <sighs> okay, Jordan.